Hello everyone, this is Jeremiah Splendin from Intel. Today we have a P4 workshop talk from Gonzalo Matos with the title, A Change Detection Primitive for the Network Data Plane. Gonzalo holds a Master of Science degree in Information Systems and Computer Engineering from the Instituto Superior Tecnico in Portugal. He is interested in the areas of cybersecurity, distributed systems, and computer networks. Gonzalo's ongoing work is focused on the research to develop solutions to network problems entirely in the data plane of programmable switches. More specifically, he is currently working on change detection primitives to detect changes in real time inside of the data plane. And with that, I hand it over to Gonzalo and I'm looking forward to your talk. Hello, and thank you for the introduction, Jeremiah. Uh, so my name is Gonzalo Matos, and I will be giving an in-depth talk about Chameleon. That is a change detection primitive for the network data plane that I've been developing together with Professor uh, Salvatore Signorello from the Faculty of Sciences of the University of Lisbon and Professor Fernando Ramos of the Institute Superior Technic, also in the University of Lisbon. Uh, traffic changes are normal in any functioning network setup, and often they are not associated with any undesired behaviors. However, there is a subset of these changes called anomalies that might mean that there is something not, or that there is something wrong in the network. Uh, it might mean that there is an attack happening, or it might mean that there are microbursts happening in the network, or it might mean that some piece of hardware has failed. So the timely detection of these kinds of changes is very important for network operation. Uh, traditional change detection techniques uh, usually, usually resort to sampling via uh, flow-based measurements uh, to keep track of uh, per-flow information within CPU, memory, and the bandwidth available. Uh, however, depending on the sampling rate used, this can lead to very low fidelity in the results obtained. Also, these kinds of techniques are based on fixed function equipment that is difficult to manage and to configure. Uh, but networks are changing, and with software-defined networking, we have enabled the separation of the, the control from the data plane, and we have enabled the programmability of both the control and the data plane now. Together with programmable switching ships and the before language, we have now enabled or might enable the detection of traffic changes inside the data plane too. Uh, there are already some in-network change detection techniques, uh, that use P4 to perform uh, change detection. However, these techniques are often based on heavy heaters only. Uh, these heavy heaters are the flows that contributed the most uh, for the network traffic. However, sometimes the problem is with smaller flows. So we are going to tackle the problem using a different approach. That is the KRE, uh, the KRE sketch, which is an offline technique but it already performs generic change detection. So we will be targeting terabit per second performance using this technique, using uh, P4 uh, for the data plan. Uh, the contributions of this work have been the design of Chameleon, which is an online change detection system that leverages programmable switches. We have implemented a prototype in P4 for the Tofino switch, and we have evaluated it using the software switch PMV2 that demonstrates K-million achieves the same level of accuracy as the KRE algorithm. We'll now move to the design of K-million. And first, I will explain a bit better what are sketches and how do they work if you're not uh, used to it. So sketches are compact summaries of network traffic, which enable the design of memory efficient network monitoring systems. It's, uh, as you can see below, it's a matrix-like data structure with a width K and a height H. And for each row of the sketch, you give it a hash function. So for example, if you want to update it, uh, imagine you have a key K1, you would select the packet fields you want to hash and you would hash it to uh, one position of each row of the sketch and update it with a value. This value could be just an increment of one or it could be the size of the packet, you, you choose it. Uh, then we would have an update for K2, for example, we would hash to uh, other positions in each row of the sketch, then K3 and K1 again, and we would update the sketch. But we do not, we also want to use these values. And so we want to estimate the values for each given key. 
And for this, I'm going to use a very simple sketch that is the count mean sketch. And for this, it takes uh, a key, for example, K1, and it hashes it again against the, the sketch to retrieve the values uh, hashed by it. Then it chooses the minimum value. In this case, it's two. And you can see that K1 appeared two times in, in, the, in the network. So it is correct. Uh, moving on to the KIA algorithm that will be the target of our exploration. Uh, it is a batch-based approach and it works offline. Uh, so we will need to explore it and to change it. But it, it works by splitting time in, into a series of time intervals that we call epochs. And then it performs all operations at the end of each epoch. Uh, it is split into three different modules. The first one is the sketch module that updates the sketch with the observed values from each packet, like we saw with the first example of the sketch. Then it has a forecasting module that bases on uh, values observed in the past and creates a forecast sketch from those values. Then by comparing the forecast against the observed values, you build an error sketch, which you then use to estimate the errors for each key and then detect the changes. Uh, we will look into detail into the operations performed with the Kayeri. And the first ones are with the forecasting module, uh, which uses forecasting models such as the exponentially weighted moving average. And you can already see that it performs uh, floating point multiplications in it. And you can already see that it is a bit challenging to perform this inside the data plane with, using the language before. The change detection module also computes estimates on top of the error sketch which use, uh, uses medians, sums of all values in the sketch, and it uses squares. And this is, again, very challenging to perform using P4 in the data plane. Uh, we will be targeting the protocol independent switch architecture, PISA for short, uh, which uh, features a programmable parser, a programmable match action pipeline, and a programmable parser. Within the programmable match action pipeline, we can perform some operations, but the memory and the budget of operations is very limited inside this pipeline. So we can already see that the KRE algorithm has some limitations. The first, it, it does not fit the constraints of the data plane programming model. And the complex operations are not supported in P4. So we need to change it. So we built Chameleon, that is a stream-based approach, which is able to run online and inside the switch. And to do this, it performs the operations incrementally instead of all at the end of each epoch. Uh, and then it only sends the changes to the controller ad hoc. Uh, and these changes are like a, a flow key or some kind of data that identifies where did the change happen. Uh, and then this information can be used by a wide array of applications, such as attack detection, microburst detection, fault tolerance, or even load balancing. Here we see a more in-depth view of the Chameleon. We can see that it first checks a control sketch, which tells what kind of operation we want to perform. And if the epoch is changing, we need to reset the sketches. Otherwise, we will need to update each value uh, of both the forecast and the error. We only see that each formula, formula of the error and the forecast model are broken down into smaller operations to be performed incrementally. Uh, and then after this is performed, we will need to estimate the error and compute the threshold from the error sketch and compare both to see if the change has happened. Uh, here we have a figure which illustrates better the pipeline of operations required by the Chameleon. And we can see that it first verifies the epoch to see if the current packet is still inside the time uh, interval that we, we were before. And then we will take the packet header and hash the positions we want to see which positions of the sketch we'll need to update. Uh, next, we will check if the epoch has changed before and update the forecast sketch accordingly. If the epoch has changed, we will need to reset the sketch. But if it did not change, we will just need to update it. Uh, then we do the same check for the error, for the error sketch and we might need to reset it or just update it. Uh, then 
we will use the error and the forecast and compute the estimates and then we'll detect the changes. If we detect a change with this packet, we will immediately notify the controller, which will then take action uh, that is needed. Uh, in the cases that we need to reset the forecast sketch, uh, we need to perform more than one operation with the same values and this with the same uh, data structures. And this is not possible using uh, in the TNA or the Tofino native architecture. So we need to use a dedicated recirculation port with a 100 gigabit per second uh, uh, speed. And then we can perform the extra operations uh, and pre-compute the forecast update and then update the forecast again. We'll now move to the evaluation. And in this, we wanted to ask uh, three main questions. The first one is how does Chameleon perform compared to the KRE algorithm? The second is what is the expected performance of Chameleon? And the third one is what is the resource usage of Chameleon? The evaluation of Chameleon uses several packet traces from two data sets. One of them, or the first one, uh, containing network attacks, and the second one containing microburst events. Uh, we used three versions of the, of the code uh, to perform these tests. The first one, we had to implement the KR in Python because there was no uh, implementation available, and we had to establish a baseline to uh, verify uh, our program. Next, we implemented the Chameleon in P4 for the behavior model uh, to verify the correctness in to check if everything matched up with the original algorithm. Uh, next, uh, we are targeting the Tofino native architecture. So we are building a P4 code for the final target, which is the Tofino, and then we'll perform the, the final evaluation. So the first question was about comparing Chameleon against the KRE. So we vary the size of the sketch, in this case, the, the height of the sketch, which affects the number of complex uh, computations performed. And as you, we can see, the median relative difference is very low for any value of this height, because it's always less than 0.2%. Our P4 prototype for the Tofino native architecture compiles successfully, and this gives us some guarantees that it can run at line rate sustaining terabit per second uh, performance and network traffic. Mm -hmm. However, for this implementation, we have still not included the estimate of the error and the computation of the threshold. Uh, about the resource usage on the Tofino native architecture, uh, we are still only using seven stages uh, in our preliminary prototype, and we are only using the ingress uh, to perform the computations. Uh, we are using uh, only 16.7% of the meter uh, arithmetic logic units and only 13.9% of the hash distribution units. Uh, to conclude, uh, the design of Chameleon, uh, we have contributed with the design of Chameleon, which is an online change detection system that leverages programmable switches. Uh, we have implemented a prototype in P4 for the software uh, for the Tofino switch. And we have evaluated uh, the, using uh, the software switch PMV2 that demonstrates that Chameleon achieves the same level of accuracy as the KRE algorithm. Uh, as future work, we, will, we would like to detect entirely in the data plane, which is still not implemented. Uh, we are still missing, as I said before, the computation of the estimates and the detection of the changes, but we still have several stages left in the pipeline so we think this is still possible to implement inside the data plane. Uh, we have still not explored a wide array of use cases, but we know that by tuning some of the parameters, we can improve the detection accuracy of this primitive uh, for different use cases. And potentially we could also create a parameter optimizer perhaps that could optimize the characteristics or the parameters of the solution to uh, perform better for a certain type of use case that we want to tackle. Uh, the Chameleon also does not maintain the culprit flows of, of the attacks or the changes. So it can, cannot on its own detect the changes. We need a reversibility me mechanism and we are considering two options for this. 
The first one is to use the flow keys directly from the packets as they traverse the switch in the subsequent epoch. So this would uh, have us uh, understand that the packets that come in the first epoch would have the same flow keys as the second epoch. And this might not be true all the time. The second approach will be by using a scheme based on some sort of voting mechanism. For example, the one used on the MV sketch, which uses a voting mechanism to choose the heaviest keys in the, in the network. But this again would not uh, make K-million a generic approach because it would only be based on the heaviest keys and not all of them. Uh, thank you. And if you have any questions, I'd be glad to answer them. Thank you, Gonzalo. That was a very interesting talk. And it's uh, great to see what can be done in data planes today. Uh, it's really, really interesting. Um, you shared um, the Tofino implementation or yet you're working on it. Do you plan to make it open source at some point in time? Uh, yeah, we plan it to make it open source, but since it's not finished yet, we wanted to first finish the code and have everything inside the data plane. And only then we would share the code with everything yeah. complete. Yeah, that makes sense, I guess. We have um, also some problems with the NDAs, some things we cannot share. We still want to understand what can we share and what we would have to be omitted. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a very known problem in sourcing. Um, on to the Tofino implementation. Do you have some more information you can share about how you implement these complex uh, uh, mathematical operations in the data plane and before? Uh, about the forecast, uh, we had to do some sort of uh, the floating point multiplications and we had to simplify them and do it uh, via bit shifts. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, it's very basic stuff like uh, integer division and that sort of thing using before primitives. Uh, but the real issue is with the estimates. We are looking at ways we could perform medians and uh, squares. And that is really the, the bigger problem we are trying to tackle. And we are still exploring ways to do that. OK, yeah. So I'm really looking forward to the open source implementation to have a, have a closer look how you manage with that. It's really great. Um, based on this current work, um, do you have some thoughts on the application areas in terms of how you would do that? How do you would you deploy such a system in practice? Do you imagine this to be a dedicated device that uh, conducts security uh, monitoring, or would you imagine it's co-hosted with a switching implementation on the same um, data plane? Uh, any thoughts on that? Yeah, it, it could be applied in different uh, scenarios. It could be uh, a dedicated uh, device, but it, it could also, I, be, I believe it, it could be used for a wide array of applications and, and a lot of different ways, for, for example, in a data center uh, or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think it's a really, really exciting um, um, thing to, to that we see these these things direct in data plane. Um, in terms of um, the estimate, and you talked about epochs, uh, epoch. Um, what kind of epoch sizes are we talking about? Is it, or what kind of time and time intervals, what time of time scales are we talking about? Is it like microsecond, millisecond? Uh, at this point, uh, most of the tests have been run in the behavior model. And mm -hmm. these tests were run in the orders of seconds, but we believe that with the Tofino and running tests in real hardware, we will be able to scale down to the orders of nanoseconds. Uh, possibly nanoseconds could be too low for now, but uh, microseconds for sure. And are there any limitations in terms of how many or on the traffic characteristics, like how many flows are you able to track at the same time or um, what kind of traffic you can you can look at or is it completely generic? Uh, really, it, it would just be limited to the amount of memory we can have because since it's already a sketch, we, we would be able to condense uh, all flows into the sketch, but it's really a matter of how much memory we have inside and 
the most memory, the bigger the, the sketch will be, the less collision. So you will have more useful information, but uh, really it's mostly about the trapping and what we are trying to do, but it, it should be fine, yeah. Okay, interesting. Um, given on the numbers that you shared earlier, what um, kind of, um, or what kind of, or how, how many flows would you expect to to be able to to track? You shared these resource numbers earlier. Do you have yes. some some context to share in terms of what kind of assumptions are you making in terms of traffic? Uh, right now, I'm not making a lot of assumptions in regards to the number of packets, but I, I would certainly say um, hundreds of thousands of uh, packets or or flows. Uh, I could not give you uh, an exact number of, or uh, an exact uh, order of magnitude, but I would say for sure uh, hundreds of thousands. Oh, well, that, that's great. Um, and yeah, it, I think it's, a, it's a, a great topic. Do you have any future plans um, once you, um, you have the K million worked out? Uh, what other areas do you think could be tackled completely in data plane? It's a kind of outlook. Uh, I mean, after the K million, I think other stuff could be worked around uh, in merging this with perhaps um, machine learning and trying to classify what kinds of changes have been generated because this is not really saying what is the change and what happened. This is just saying that there was a change. So maybe integrating this with a machine learning algorithm that would say, this is a change, this is an attack, this is a microburst and really identifying what happened. It could be something that could still be done in the, might be possible to perform still in the data plane or could be performed by the controller, but it's really something that could be integrated into the design. Uh, but other than that, uh, I'm not really still looking at other possibilities. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. I just wanted to, to get an idea what what your thoughts are on this topic. I think it's a very, um, it makes a lot of sense to have um, in data plane sketches as, as the kind of sensors in the network and then have some aggregation mechanism to bring it all together and to figure out what's actually going on. So that's a, a very, very uh, interesting area. Thank you again for your talk and, and for the discussion. And yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, your future work and uh, the open sourcing of your, of your algorithm. Thank you. Thank you.